Hey everybody, welcome and thank you for being patient and welcome to another Watch and Stitch by Anita Good Design. My name is Brian and today I'm going to be walking you through the very first Watch and Stitch of April. Of course, we have more coming out. You can get all of April's Watch and Stitch online right now for only $30. Be sure to check the link below. And of course, you can go back and watch these at any time. Speaking of which, March is all now available for you also. So if you want to just sit through and watch this with me or do it along with me, and then decide if you'd like to go back and get it, by all means, go right ahead. So to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today, we're doing clear vinyl applique. Of course, um, the one we are going to be doing here in class, so a stitch out example is, let's see if I got that in there, perfect, is the actual perfume bottle. So what are we using? Well, we're gonna be using this actual clear vinyl. We like to use a medium gauge, vinyl like an eight gauge or no thicker than but all of your materials lists are going to be in the tutorial for you so check that out before you dive in and start stitching your own project what we're going to do first and foremost is get going and then i'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit and give you any tidbits of information that you'll need so the first thing we've done is gone through our materials list i hooped my stabilizer with a base fabric and we're going to run the first step of the machine, which is going to be the placement stitch. So I'll explain what all this is and exactly what we're doing in a moment after we get this guy rolling. All right. So essentially what we're doing is we're just applicating. And a lot of you know from uh, other videos I've done or even in class education, that I talk about there's only a few types of techniques that we actually do at a need of good design. One of them is applique. Once you know how to do just the basics of applique, anything else on top of it is just aesthetics. So it's very, very simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is, um, they've pre-prepped my fabrics for me, is uh, we are going to take the first piece of fabric. You can see here that I have my placement stitch for an applique because that'll need a good design. We take a paint by numbers approach to everything we create. So now there's no guesswork as to how much I need to pre-prep and where it goes in the hoop. So we'll take the applique, noticing the placement stitch, place it on top and completely cover the entire placement stitch. Now, if you're new to this, I'd recommend taping the corners to hold it down. Um, if you've been doing it a while, you can either watch it or hold it with your hands. You'll kind of know what to expect and see if the presser foot's accidentally moving anything. But the second step for every applique we do is a tack down stitch. So taking that same paint by numbers approach, I saw where the stitches told me to put it in the hoop. I put my applique after I measured that placement stitch and cut it out right side down covering those placement stitches. Excuse me, right side up rather, covering those placement stitches. The next one after that is just tacking it. That is all there is to applique. Everything else that happens after this is just aesthetic because we could just be doing a standard satin stitch cover. We could be doing a blanket stitch. We could be doing hidden applique for a realistic stitch or utilizing fun materials such as clear vinyl. So Lauren in the chat, because I, I know you guys were mentioning that we had a lot of different people out there today from all over. Do we have any uh, comments or anybody you'd like to me to give a shout out to today? Well, we already have a, our first question is so what kind of stabilizer you're using? Yeah, absolutely. So the stabilizer I'm using for this particular project, and I'll show you how I'm trimming in just a moment, is um, basically going to be dependent on what I'm using it for. For instance, this is just an applique design, so we can't necessarily tell you what type of stabilizer to use, because what if you're putting this on a quilt block? Then you would be using cutaway. If you're putting it on a t-shirt or a garment, you would be using um, either a fusible cutaway, maybe you would be using uh, a tearaway just for the time being, and then you would cover the back side of it. So it really just plays on what you're using the applique for. Um, however, on every single About Us, meaning every single design you get from us, there is a PDF called About Us. If you open that up, there is a section on stabilizers that actually kind of walks you through the basics of what we recommend, and there's really not much. It's just knowing what they would be used for and when to use it. And essentially, a cutaway is used almost all the time if you are trying to get the most stability, meaning you're sewing two things together. Here in class, I'm just showing it to you on an actual piece of fabric. I just used tearaway. I could have also used water soluble. So either one of those is fine for this particular application because it's not going 
with my intention, on anything that's going to be sewn together, meaning I'm not making a bag or a quilt out of this or anything else. You'll also see that, <clears throat> make sure I've got it in the camera frame, that trimming this, I have trimmed just to the tack down stitch all the way around. That's how you always want to trim all of your applique with no more of about a 16th to an eighth of an inch sticking out past that tack down. More than that, and it's gonna have a ragged look to it, which is okay if you're doing ragged edge or raw edge applique, but not when you want to have a nice pretty finish to it with satin stitches, etc. Plus we're gonna be making this look beautiful with that actual clear vinyl on there as the topping at the end. All right. So what we're doing and how we're following this tutorial book is of course you're all gonna to want to use the pictures, but make sure you are following the number steps first in your tutorial. The number steps will correspond with the machine. The pictures are here for a visual reference, kind of lining up um, all of our terminology, essentially. And once I uh, get a few more steps in and some embroidery runs start to go, I'll dive deeper into questions and why don't we just start by uh, doing a prize call here. So I'd like to give away a $20 gift certificate to one lucky winner right now. And all you have to do is type in the comments, watch and stitch, watch and stitch. Type that phrase into the comments and we'll pick a winner here for a $20 gift card momentarily. So what we're doing now is running through the second step for this particular one. Again, this is why you want to use your number steps because if you chose to do any of these others, the pictures are not going to completely match up with the step by step. However, the pictures will show me how close to trim, how I'm placing things, what we mean when we say trim your applique, well, how close are you trimming? That's why the pictures are helpful, but they're not a step by step. So now that I've run the next step for my applique, same thing, placement stitch, fabric goes right side up. Of course, at home, you can cut your fabric to fit even closer, or if you have an electronic cutter, you can export that applique file and actually have it pre-trim it for you. So some helpful little tips there. Let me rewind this thread real quick. So just as I mentioned, applique is applique. It's always a placement stitch. You're always putting your fabric right side up over it and you're always going to tack it down and then trim. The way you trim, and what happens next, again, is just application, but the principal technique of applique and how we always do it at Anita, placement stitch, put it right side up, tack it, trim it. All right, there we go. So on to uh, the tack down stitch for that second piece of applique. Now, when it comes to uh, clear vinyl um, or applique in general, it's not always about what color 6040 cotton that you're using. It's also a lot of fun to play with different types of materials like mylar or cardstock or uh, cork or clear vinyl. When you're using something that is a non-woven material, it's always important to keep in mind that every time your needle goes into that non-woven material, it is actually puncturing it. And if the density of those stitches is too much, it will perforate it. So if you are using non-woven materials, I see you learn then um, I would recommend using a thinner needle, like a 7511 Universal would be great. That way the needle isn't so big that it's helping the perforation of said non-woven material. Yes, Lauren? We have our winner. Who's that winner? It is Ruta Ward. Ruta Ward, you are the first winner of the Watch and Stitch for April. Congratulations. If you just reach out to us at customer experience dash, or excuse me, Anita dash, gooddesign.com right below in the banner there then they will shoot you off that $20 gift certificate so congratulations you can use that on our website for any of our retail product as well so enjoy all right so same thing next piece of applique and I'll show you how this looks after I've trimmed it but we're just going through I like using curve tip applique scissors because they really get into the cuts without puncturing all the way through. So you can see there, we've got two appliques on right now, but I've really just done the same thing twice. It's just a different aesthetic shape based on the art and digitizing. All right, so this is gonna be the first embroidery step, meaning the first step that I'm actually going to see when I'm done with my design. 
So this is an aesthetic stitch. So now I want to pay attention to the color I'm going to use for it. So let's see here. Um, we originally used a slightly darker one. Well, I might switch it up. I'm gonna keep this lighter one in here for the first satin stitch. But when um, we're actually making sure it takes off good there, all right? So um, you'll notice uh, right now with the angle of the camera that it's going to do a satin stitch. Now the satin stitch is pretty wide, so we basically randomize in the digitizing that satin stitch um, to give it stability. It goes through and does those underlay stitches, which is gonna hold it together really well and make that satin stitch sit up nice and pretty on top of the actual embroidery. But uh, what if you're using a fabric that has a little bit of pile or loft to it? Maybe you're using a flannel or something like that. That can have the actual embroidery sink into the pile. So when you have really beautiful embroidery and you're putting it on a material that's not completely flat on the surface, um, for instance, like a standard like linen or 60-40 cotton, I'd recommend using a topping. That's really gonna help all of your stitches sit on top of any fabric you're using. All right, so while this is running through, just like to remind you once again that um, all of Anita's good designs, watch and stitches are on our YouTube channel. Did I even, you gra did I grammatize that properly? <laughs> <laughs> I, I work with all teachers and every time I write or say something, I get side glances because and I know, I know. But um, either way, all of the uh, Anita Good Designs watch and stitch are on our YouTube channel. You can get, all of March's are now available. So you can get that, you can go back and rewatch and learn right with us. April's started today, so welcome to the first class of April once again. You can get the April watch and stitch, also $30 on our website, just follow the links below and download it. All right, so speaking of uh, sales, we also have a flash sale today. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there have uh, little fluffy companions in your house. Um, I have a dog myself that me and my fiance love dearly. And of course we live in the middle of the city so we are constantly picking up after them outside wherever we go. And these pet bag dispensers are flash sale today. They're fun little projects, just in a couple hoopings. You can even see it creates the hole to pull the bags out of. It fits with any standard um, a pet bag roll, for instance. Lots of cute sayings on one side, the hole on the other. Like a crazy dog lady on this one. Or this one with uh, more of a Southwestern type theme. I'm here for the tail wags and poo bags. Used to say that on my biker cut back when I rode hard with a bunch of people. And this one, I rough you very much also. So these are a lot of fun designs in there. Some other ones are a bit uh, tongue in cheek that you'll find, but the flash sale online, Anita's Express pet bag dispensers, half off, $15, get it while it lasts. You're gonna enjoy it and they make great gifts. Okay, so we finished up with that first satin stitch. And now I'm gonna change my thread color just to give it a little bit of variety in there. Go with a slightly darker one. Now, when it comes to you picking your thread and fabric colors, I know um, a lot of people really get hung up on what we used. Uh, but unless it's a tile seam that you're trying to replicate exactly, or a realistic stitch of say like a, um, a birds and flowers that are 50 states, for instance, those you want to look exact. But literally 99% of the rest of our stuff, this is kind of abstract and you can really pick any fabrics and threads you like. We also have on our website in the customer center under PDF tutorials, we have a full guide on how we pick colors here at Anita Good Design. Because we come out with so many things every single month, picking fabrics and threads is obviously one of the first things we do when we have the concept of a collection we're creating. So we'll create a storyboard. And when we go pick fabrics and threads, the first thing we do is we find the fabrics we want. It's way easier to always take a couple bolts of fabric to a thread rack and find coordinating threads off of a small rack than taking threads off the rack and walking up and down the aisles of a fabric shop trying to find things to match. So if you're seeing us use specific colors, you have to keep in mind that unless you're using the exact same fabric we are, which is always hard to do because they change like the seasons, then I would just recommend picking your own fabric and finding the threads to coordinate with it that you like. But we go all over that in that tutorial, which is again, website, just log in, go to customer center, 
click PDF tutorials, and there is a wealth of information under there. Same thing with uh, when you click videos under PDF tutorials, it takes you right here to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you can stay in touch because we have a lot of great content coming out and uh, we have a, a full staff now that is dedicated to bringing you videos and new education all the time. So please make sure to do that. And the more you share it, the more we get out there, the more content we can even create. Okay. So I was going through right now and doing some more of those satin stitches. We'll wet the whistle. Let me uh, not advertise. It is bottled water though, don't worry. All right, so we finished up uh, step seven for this particular one. Just gonna switch the color to another one here. Let's do this guy, the orange one. And same thing, when it comes to uh, an abstract design, as long as you pick colors that work well with the fabrics you're using, you can really mix up the order in which you use those colors for the most part and not have to get really hung up on what thread am I going to use next. When in doubt, um, you can always just run a test design and just see how your colors work together. So um, typically a lot of us, when we go and we buy fabrics and bolts of threads, et cetera, we're getting a little bit extra for oopsies and boo-boos, but if you have the ability to, I'd always recommend getting a little bit extra just so you can run some color tests and see if you like what you picked before you just go all out and start running all these different um, designs, patterns, blocks, if you're making a quilt, etc., only to find out that they don't really look that great <laughs> as they're stitching, uh, which has never happened to us here before at Anita. All right. So now that we finished with some of the basic embroidery that's uh, going on the body of the perfume bottle, which is also where I'm going to be having the clear vinyl, uh, this clear vinyl going on top of the bottle itself is going to lend to the aesthetic effect of it being a glass bottle. So that's why we're using this in this particular design. But right now it is going to go ahead and let's see, we're going to run the tacking stitch for this vinyl. Now, as I mentioned, um, you never want to do any kind of design that has a really high stitch density. Maybe it wasn't digitized to use vinyl because that really high stitch density, of course it always helps if I put some thread in the machine, that high stitch density once again is just gonna perforate that non-woven material. So what we do is we kind of manipulate the densities of the stitches we're using based upon the material we plan on using for any particular project. So for like Mylar applique, which is essentially just party balloon material, if you're not familiar. Mylar applique, we would um, do a really wide fill stitch on top to help hold that material down, because it's not woven. It's not sewing into the weave to hold that material down. It's just cutting holes in it. Whereas this, if you look just to the inside, actually, would you mind switching to camera one? Thank you. Just to the inside here, let me see if I can get it to focus. There we go, maybe a little bit there. So just to the inside of the actual satin stitch on the outside of the body of the bottle is a really wide zigzag stitch. So what that does is it keeps that dense satin stitch from completely perforating and cutting through the vinyl itself. So the zigzag stitch kind of reaches in there. It's really spread out so those needle marks are far apart. And now I can have a decorative satin stitch. It's really bold, has the proper density for a 40 weight thread, but that zigzag just inside of it is what's gonna keep it from coming out because this other satin stitch would certainly perforate it. It's gonna cut right through it. Okay. Um, while this is stitching, I just to remind uh, a lot of you out there, or maybe you haven't heard, but our Stephen Wilson Signature Series Volume 3 is on pre-order now. You can get on the website. I believe it's on special for $99. Is that right, Lauren? La last I saw. Pre-order. $99 for the pre-order. Yeah, the books will come in in May. And the books are coming in May. Thank you, Lauren. Yep. So um, that right there is the uh, obvious third edition released from Stephen's Art Studio. And we've um, 
decided that with the uh, volumes two and so on and so forth, we're going to stick to a theme. And this theme is all uh, realistic stitch flowers that are done freestanding and then combined and molded using water soluble stabilizer that's not rinsed completely out. We are able to create a lot of beautiful designs and I think you're gonna be very happy with what you see. So dive into the website, check out all the info on that pre-order, get it today if it's something you know you're gonna love because that special is not going to last. All right, I'll show you how we trimmed up this vinyl here and what to look for. Let's see, let me get in that camera shot without direct glare. There we go. So when I put the vinyl on top, my essential placement stitch is the entire body of the bottle, which is why we did the sequences in that order for the steps. So I covered it, because it's just a placement stitch essentially, and then I tacked it and I trimmed it just like normal. You just have to be careful that non-woven materials will tend to tear and fall out if mishandled. So just be delicate while you're doing that. Let's see, here we go, yeah. So that's what it looks like so far. Let's continue with the steps here. All right, and now we just have some more um, decorative steps which if you're following along, I'm on step nine if you're following the number steps. All right. Okay, and I'll show you the um, zigzag stitch as soon as it's done with this because that's what it's currently doing is going through and doing that zigzag stitch first, which literally a zigzag stitch is a really wide, low density satin stitch. A satin stitch is a zigzag stitch. It's just that the higher the density, the more it looks like the plies are side by side. But in all reality, it's just zigzagging on a small scale or a really wide scale. And then this also gives you the opportunity, which um, I did not do because I'm a rebel, but it breaks up the sequence so that the top of this applique, you can coordinate the thread with, so it blends in and then it switches again so you can re-coordinate with the bottom. Um, but I didn't do that. <laughs> However, you are able to do that at home. Uh, I know oftentimes at events, um, people will ask me, Brian, why are these steps broken up? Wouldn't it be easier if you didn't? Uh, that's usually on the side of the digitizer saying, I need a good design. When they're stitching it, they might be choosing um, two colors that could be combined but maybe you wanna separate those and have them as different colors, or maybe it's the sequence in which it needs to be layered in order for it to actually come up properly. Because there are machines that have a feature called color sort. I don't ever recommend using that with the neatest products unless you really know what you're doing and know how to read the preview window on your machine. All right, so you can see there, we've got the rest of that zigzag stitch in. Trying to get the glare off it. Just about right there. Yeah. Let's see if it focuses, but either way, you'll be able to see it when you're stitching along with me. <laughs> so next up is the actual decorative satin stitching on the bottle itself, which I am good with using the same color going along the outside. All right. So um, to, to kind of touch uh, back on one of the first questions I got, meaning uh, what stabilizer am I using? And of course I mentioned that's really dependent on what you're putting it on. Um, if you're ever concerned that you're not sure which stabilizer to use for a particular project, typically you're doing a supply run to your local shop to pick up more materials. If you let them know, hey, I'm putting this on a quilt block what stabilizer should I use? They'll pretty much always tell you a cutaway. We just like recommending that no-show mesh lightweight cutaway because it's very malleable, it won't weigh down your blocks, etc. cetera. Um, but then again, it can go on a myriad of things. So putting something on a denim jacket is gonna require um, a different type of stabilizer than a jersey knit shirt, for instance, uh, because one is very good with the twill weave, the other is a jersey which is gonna stretch and pucker. So it's all based on exactly what you're putting it on, but that's where going into your local shop or even conversing with each other here in the chat and the comments, you'll be able to find a lot of other information as well. 
satin stitches are coming along nicely. So while this one is uh, finishing the satin stitch, um, we also have a way to where every month, you know, we come out with a lot of different retail design collections, design packs, all different themes to help you throughout the year, give you the most of what we have. That is our all access club membership. This is gonna bundle all of that stuff together. So you don't have to go online and buy all of those things individually. You can actually get them all bundled for a minimum of 80% off. And that will help build your library so that you have all of the retail stuff we come out with over a year's period, which is phenomenal. But what All Access also does for you is it's going to give you the printed tutorials for everything, or digital, or both, depending on which way you decide to sign up. Now, if that interests you or you wanna hear more about it, well, lucky for you, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be having a, um, Lauren, I apologize, what was the exact name you were calling it? The All Access Academy. I was about to screw that up. I just got back from a university event, so. <laughs> but the All Access Academy will be doing uh, live on Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. So if you don't wanna miss it, again, we're on YouTube. Make sure you go ahead and like this video, but hit subscribe, click that notification bell. That notification bell will send you an actual notification whenever we're going live with any new content whatsoever. So you'll also get notified at Friday when we go ahead and do that because you might not be in this time zone so you don't have to think about it by clicking that subscribe and notification bell. All right, it's going through and just doing the outside of this now. But um, in the comments, let's do another gift card giveaway, another $20 prize for you. And all you need to do is type in perfume in the comments, perfume. <laughs> and Lauren, is there any uh, anything you'd like me to share with everybody from the comments? Yeah, people are working with vinyl, there's a design, yeah, that's love, 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 Well, thanks for all the uh, praise and love to our company in the comments. Um, likewise, uh, a lot of people do love playing with the vinyl. Uh, the vinyl can be used in a lot of different collections. Typically, you'll find it, uh, we've used it quite often doing snow globe type of um, collections, which... You can do these snow globes just like this one here, but I can also take like uh, some little glitter flakes and put it down before the vinyl and that will actually stay in there. So for ones that are open like this, I can actually have that in there and the way I turn it, it'll look more like a snow globe. And we get a vast majority of our ideas in terms of what collections we're going to come up with and the schedules we create for ourselves uh, to create are right from you, our customers, whether it's from us traveling around the country or the comments and emails that we get from you. So we love to hear what other things you've done with vinyl. Leave that in the comment below as well. Let us know. As you guys are typing in perfume for a $20 gift card. <laughs> Now, did you have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Is the vinyl washable? Uh, that's a good question. So um, there's a question in the comments. Lauren just reads me, is the vinyl washable? Uh, I am going to say no, but that depends on how you're going to wash it. If you plan on hand washing something, you know it's delicate, you know it can pull out of those stitches, then I'd say that's just fine. But this isn't exactly something you would want to put on, say, a, a little boy's t-shirt. <laughs> it's gonna be a one and done <laughs> so yeah absolutely and, and the directions they go over it, it's not something we'd recommend putting in the washer at all there's um uh it, this is essentially the same material which i used to joke about in class all the time that you know my grandmother would keep on the couch when we come over so it's that it's that it's just vinyl that's it if you've ever worn a cheap rain jacket or one of those cheap or fashionable clear vinyl umbrellas <laughs> um, that that's all it is it's that exact type of material but again I recommend getting um, no thicker than a medium 8 gauge vinyl um, that's gonna give you enough body to work with it's not gonna be so thin that it comes apart because when I travel I hear people all the time saying yeah I've used the vinyl but what kind are you guys using because mine just keeps falling apart and they, they'll sometimes even bring samples and show me and I'm like yeah that's way too thin so you definitely want to stick to around that eight gauge when it comes to the vinyl itself 
you'll typically find that stuff works and uh, is usually available in most places that are fabric shops, etc. We have our winner. Who's that winner? Albertina Benedicto. Albertina Benedicto. Congratulations. You've won a $20 gift card that you can use on our website to get any retail product you like. Just email us at the uh, banner below, customer experience at anita-gooddesign.com, and I'll shoot that right over. Congratulations. All right, so now we're back on to normal appliques. Um, as you saw as it was stitching out, it just finished up the body of it, which, sorry, but it is a uh, reflective vinyl with the uh, lights there and everything. However, I'm sure you're able to see it better on the hoop camera. So now we're gonna go through and we're going to do the top of the bottle itself. So the applique in there. And as you can see, we have a question. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, they were asking, we let them know the designs for Signature Series 3 are going to be downloadable, the designs that come with them. Yes, so um, Signature Series 3, you will receive, the books will be shipped in May, is uh, what we're, we're currently banking on. The um, actual uh, designs themselves will be sent to you. So with the purchase of that, you're going to receive the designs separately from the book since it is digital, which um, I know we get a lot of questions on, but um, as I like to, uh, to mention to people, you know, once upon a time there was a track and then there were cassette tapes, VHS and CDs had a very long run, but they're going out and basically uh, you can't even really buy a computer anymore that has a CD-ROM drive. So that's why not only us, but the entire world is just moving away from CDs now into more of a digital atmosphere but very convenient in the fact that um i've broken plenty of cds scratched them to where they're not readable but your downloads are forever <laughs> or as long as the internet works so unless there's like a global outage you got your downloads <laughs> all right so now we're going through and just trimming up the top of the bottle applique here so same thing Paint by numbers approach, placement stitch. Place the applique right side up, tack it down, and then trim it up accordingly. You're almost always gonna trim right up to that tack down stitch, but that's why I say always use the number steps, but refer to the picture steps to see how we're doing it. Because there may be instances where we are not actually tacking, or cutting rather, all the way to the tack down because sometimes we wanna have a raw edge look with just a, a bean stitch going around it. Sometimes we would like to have a um, ragged edge where we leave a quarter inch of that fabric sticking out past the tack down and then go through every half inch and kind of cut into it. It just gives different aesthetic effects. But nonetheless, again, that principal technique of applique is always the same to get that foundation. And the same goes with our other techniques. I mean, the only ones you really need to know is uh, what I've been doing through this point, which is basic embroidery, just changing the threads and navigating my interface. Basic applique, which again, we know how the principle's done because we've just done it repeatedly over and over. Then you have folded fabric, which is our way of mimicking traditional hand or paper piecing in the hoop. Essentially, anytime you have a folded edge that would mimic that traditional hand or paper piecing. We refer to it at Anita as folded fabric because that's the digitized technique we're using to achieve that aesthetic result. So same thing with folded fabric is each piece of folded fabric is always done the same way. It doesn't matter if it's for the edge of the fabric going along a zipper, if it is for a flying yeast pattern, a quilt block, if it's for a Bargello quilt, it doesn't matter. Folded fabric is always done the same way. So now I've got my uh, final two pieces of applique, which is the same color. So I can actually just use this piece and stretch it. All I have to do is make sure that, oh, I just pulled my thread out, that the actual um, placement stitch is completely covered. Again, that's that rule for applique is placement stitch, fabric down right side up, tack it, and then trim it. And of course, the uh, final major technique that we have is foundation for our quilt blocks, which honestly, you're, you're only with the quilt block, 
it's only the first two steps that make the quilt block. The way we do it is we just hoop our stabilizer. We're not hooping any fabric or anything in there. We run a placement stitch on the stabilizer and then we put down our batting because we quilt our blocks as we go. I always know at events who my uh, quilters are when they come into a physical event because they walk right over to my samples and they look on the back of the actual quilts. And it took me a year to figure out what you were looking at, but you wanna know how we quilt our designs. We're just quilting the top layer in the hoop as we go. So literally just going through and doing the uh, placement stitch, tacking down that batting, that's all there is to the foundation of a quilt block. Everything else on top of it is just applique, folded fabric, and embroidery. And I just told you how we keep all of our principal foundational techniques basically the same. Because what that does is it, one, keeps us from reinventing the wheel every single week when we're making new collections. Because everybody in this building knows that a applique is done with a placement stitch, fabric right side up, tack down stitch. Same thing with folded fabric, quilt block. Those rules are always the same, which means we are able to recreate um, the same technique a million different ways to where it looks completely different. But you're really just doing the same thing. And once you kind of really understand that, you're gonna feel way more empowered to going through and doing a lot more of our collections. Then you're gonna to say to yourself, wow, I've been spending a lot of money buying these individual collections because I've just been enjoying them so much. And that's when you're gonna realize doing the All Access Club is the actual best way to maximize not only the amount of collections you're receiving, but to minimize the amount of money you're spending. So more about that again on Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you tune in for that as well. So going through here, just finishing up the applique steps. Um, right now, we're just doing those uh, final steps for the embroidery. We're on uh, steps 16 to 20. So again, it's just putting down the appliques, tacking, trimming, running those finishing stitches. Something um, that I'd like to point out is that just by learning to do this bottle, you've pretty much learned how to do the front and backs of each of these because aside from them being uh, sewn together, which uh, it's been a long time since I've looked at this pattern, so I don't remember the exact steps, so I don't want to misquote it, uh, but typically for stuff like this, we're making um, one side and one hooping, taking the other side and another hooping, right sides together, tacking them, etc. But it's all just applique and embroidery. So even by doing this one bottle, you've learned how to do these pet bag dispensers. That's, that's why doing our paint by numbers approach um, actually just makes so much sense because I just learned how to do a few basic principal techniques and I can literally do anything with on our entire catalog dating back to 2004. The only thing you would have to know beyond that is if you're doing stuff that needs to be sewn together, you just need to know how to work your embroidery machine, which um, if you're like me and you don't sew because I digitize and like playing with the machines, <laughs> then uh, you, know, you can always go into your local dealer where you got a machine. Most of them have classes where they teach you to sew as well. But we rarely do anything outside of a straight stitch. All right, so now we're gonna go through and do some of this gold on here, which now I'm going to use a metallic thread. So how many of you have actually used metallic threads and you're not a huge fan of using the metallic thread? Well, I'm going to go against the advice I'm about to give you right now, but what I recommend doing is if you're finding that your machine doesn't really love the metallic thread, there's a few tips and tricks that you can do. For instance, you have to keep in mind that you have your uh, normal polishing thread, you have rayon thread, you have cotton thread. All those threads, when I turn the spool upside down, it's coming off straight. It's not maintaining the coil from the actual spool that it was on. But if I take a metallic thread, which uh, this gold is hanging on for dear life, it's the last bit of it, the actual coil is maintained when it comes off. The reason is, is because of the material. Metallic thread is a mylar based thread, typically through most manufacturers, which means it's a very thin strip of mylar with some other material around it. And that can actually hold the shape. What happens when you're using metallic threads at home, typically if you're having a lot of breaks, it's because the thread is right on the machine the way I have it right now. 
and it doesn't have enough time to straighten as it's going in. So as opposed to the thread coming off this spool comes off straight, that metallic thread is still slightly coiled and if it doesn't have enough time to really pull itself straight, it twists going into the machine, it'll grab something and then just basically either cause the needle to break or it'll just keep popping and you're not sure why. So what we typically rec recommend is if you're having those issues, to take your actual metallic thread off and away from the machine, put it on a cast iron metallic thread stand and let the line going into your machine straighten out. That's gonna save them a lot of issues. The second is, is typically people aren't using the proper needle for a metallic thread. We recommend using an 8012 metallic needle because it has the eye hole that is bigger and made for that flatter type of mylar based thread to feed through, causes less friction and helps prevent breakage. So if you're having issues with metallic thread, try that uh, thread stand I mentioned, try using that 8012 metallic needle I mentioned, um, and then if uh, you're still having issues, I mean, we run our machines at uh, almost full speed, the, even the industrial ones, using those simple um, pieces of advice. But uh, some of our seamstresses also swear on keeping the metallic thread in the freezer for about one to two hours before they use it because they think it helps reduce friction. But I'm sure there's been points in time where, uh, you know, they do that at home and their husband's going to get something out of the freezer and think that they've just fallen off the wagon again. But, <laughs> but you know. We always like to keep things in random places. However, it does serve a purpose if you're cooling something down to reduce friction. All right, rounding on the final steps here. So I'm gonna switch off that decorative metallic thread and use more of this coral looking one. All right, are there any questions or comments you'd like me to address? No questions right now. You got it. Lots of comments about metallic thread. Thank you for your tips and tricks. Nice. Which, um, those of you in the comments uh, right now, you know, talking about uh, metallic thread, etc. I mean, there's almost no advice that I'm giving that um, I didn't learn on the road doing events and teaching people because I came in with absolutely no experience to this industry. The first time I ever saw an embroidery machine was literally after I interviewed. <laughs> and got the tour of the building and everything else. Um, so that this was all new to me. I had never even sewn. Uh, my mom was the one who fixed my clothes if they got a rip. It was just all magic to me. Had no idea how a needle and thread even worked. So to put that in perspective, um, I trained for three months out doing my first event. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, after working in the hospitality industry for almost two decades, uh, I have the gift of gab so I can sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I, <laughs> I really had no idea what I was doing and, and doing uh, hundreds of events over the years now, over almost eight years with the Need a Good Design, um, I find that most of my tips and tricks come from being on the road and interacting with those of you who have decades and decades of experience doing this and essentially making every single mistake that there is to make. Which is why I always say my favorite motto is fail faster because too often you'll find that you actually ended up doing nothing when you've spent all this money on a beautiful machine, all these designs because you're too afraid of messing something up. Well, mess up. Mess up really quickly and do it over and over until you figure out the right way. That's where getting like some uh, extra cheap fabric like muslin and some old thread just to run through designs, learn your interface, um, learn how those fundamentals work that I was telling you about. You know, just, just as simple as just changing the thread, navigating your machine, doing applique, folded fabric, learning the basis of a quilt block, which uh, I also haven't mentioned. When you learn to do our quilt block technique, it doesn't mean you have to make a quilt because our quilt blocks are used in a lot of our patterns for different projects. Everything from trivets to pot holders, waist aprons, table runners, you name it, even tote bags, all have the quilt blocks as the foundation. Just like a pillow, you can make out of four eight by eight quilt blocks or smaller, depending on the size of your pillow. That, that essentially means that because our quilting system is set up to be used in patterns, we've also set our sizes based on hoops. So you have each design for a quilt block can fit in a five by seven all the way up to the largest sizes. So now if I have a pattern for a 
uh, table runner and it says stitch out 20 quilt blocks in this hoop size. Well, what if I don't like the actual design that's stitching out that came with that pattern? Well, I can just use any quilt block from any quilting collection at all, stitch it out in the hoop size it calls for, then I'm just following the pattern to sew it together. So that modularity really helps with uh, being able to intermix all those things. Yes, sorry. They're loving the tips on the, the metallic thread. Did you talk about putting it on the stand across the room too? I did, yeah, with the metallic uh, cast iron metallic thread stand, which I know we had them down in production. I didn't think we had one up here, but yeah. Uh, but it, literally, if you go into any of your shops where you typically even get thread and you mention cast iron thread stand, then um, they'll, they'll show you what it is. Um, just the base is typically cast iron, then it's just a uh, steel rod coming up with a flag shape at the tip that just gives more um, length to your, fret, to your fret, to your thread so it straightens itself out before it gets to the machine itself. So um, uh, that, that's how we've done like collections, a lot of you may remember in the past, like Golden Tapestry which was an enormous tile scene that we did on Dupioni silk. And the entire thing was done in metallic thread. And when we ran production for the samples, cause you know, when we used to do tons of events everywhere, we would have 20 of every single sample we would have to make for every collection. And we ran 20 of those golden tapestry design packs to stitch them all together to make quilts to send around the country. So we're running that on an industrial multi head machine with 15 needles per head, and we're running that at full speed with the metallic using those tips, 80-12 metallic needle with that bigger eye hole, and those stands that get set away from the direction the line feeds to the machine to make it all easier. All right, rounding to the final steps of this design, just a couple more satin stitches here. And, and make sure that uh, in the comments also, you know, this is where the community gets to engage with each other. So giving each other your tips and tricks, things you found useful, or maybe you're saying, hey, Brian, uh, yeah, that could work, but I have a better idea. Please share it down below so that we can all learn from each other in a team sewing environment. <laughs> and once again, just a reminder, because I was talking about it a moment ago with how you can do these pet dispenser bags if you were tuning in later. This is the flash sale for today. Pet dispenser bags, you can get it for 50% off, typically, in, or was in an Ease Express released in 2020. So this is now $15. Uh, again, you can load your hoops up with these things. They make great gifts. It's uh, coming up almost to uh, start making Christmas gifts. because you know the old saying, if you're a quilter, it's Christmas in July. But now you can knock out a bunch of gifts for a bunch of people because as we say at Anita, not everybody is quilt worthy. And you're not gonna make every single person in your office a queen size quilt because they will not appreciate it. So instead, doing a lot of different thoughtful gifts that don't take much time on the machine. If you have a bigger hoop, you can put tons of them in at once. It's a great way to go. All right. And as you may notice, as it's, um, you're on the hoop, okay. As it's going through and doing this satin stitch, you know, it went around and around again that's again just doing those underlay stitches the underlay stitches run perpendicular to the actual satin stitch itself so that again as i mentioned earlier when that satin stitch goes on top it's essentially sitting on top of those underlay stitches lifting it up giving it a bolder look so it really helps it sit up on top of the designs all right and also Again, just to remind you, the watch and stitch for all of April is available. That is the $30 for all of April, which you can get. And uh, again, these videos will be here forever for you to come back and watch. Um, education is a huge part of what we do, simply because, you know, it's one thing for us to just make uh, hundreds and hundreds of designs every month, tons of collections every single month throughout the year, year over year. But what are we going to do if nobody's buying it because they don't know how to use it? So free education is a huge thing for us. We do it all the time. You'll notice that just by scrolling through the YouTube page you're on right now, you're going to see that over the years, we put out hundreds and hundreds of videos for everything you can think of. And if you're not too familiar with the YouTube page that we're on right now, you can search internally 
meaning you know, you're on Anita Good Design's YouTube page, you can actually search within our YouTube page for specific videos. So maybe you're saying, okay, I just got into the quilting system, but I'm not really sure how to sew this together. I'm a traditional quilter. I know I, how I would do it traditionally, but that's not how Anita's doing it. Where can I find a video? Well, you just go to the YouTube page, you search under our YouTube page, how to finish your quilt. You're gonna see tons of videos come up, even the most recent ones, where you're gonna watch right along us doing that. Same thing with vinyl. If you type in vinyl on there, you're gonna see tons of different tutorials that we've done over the years on vinyl. Everything from pot holders, towels, I mean, you name it, zipper bags. There's a tutorial for every type of application we do based on those fundamental techniques right there for you to follow along with. So I'd love for you guys to utilize that because if you're like me and you're a visual learner, you wanna see all the nuances going on with the hands. Sometimes these pictures aren't enough and that's why we do so much with education here on the YouTube channel. So if you're a fan of that, please like, subscribe and click that notification bell. So you can always stay in touch with us here at Anita Good Designs, live videos or when we upload any kind of uh, informational video, Throwback Thursdays, doesn't matter. Or I'll be right there for you. Okay, this is actually the uh, final step. So just to show you some of the other ones that we have in there, you know, and a lot of this, again, the vinyl, the reason we're using it, or way rather, is, um, is to lend itself to the aesthetic of what we're doing. So a fish bowl, vinyl on top, looks more like a clear bowl. Same thing with the actual snow globe or with the glass case to protect the desserts. Of course, a clear umbrella and a perfume bottle. You'll notice that oftentimes when we're um, using other materials than you know, your standard 6040 cottons, etc., that we're using them in ways that lend to that aesthetic effect. So if you see when we did, for instance, dollhouses. In dollhouses, we were using actual um, uh, upholstery fabric on the couches. We were using, uh, you know, like lames to replicate stainless steel appliances. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with different types of materials, and we'd love for you to branch out there and share with us things you found that are a lot of fun to play with. Okay, well, that wraps this one up for the Anita Good Design Watch and Stitch. You can see there we're all set with our design. Everything's finished stitching out. And when you finish yours, please go to our Facebook and share with us if you're there through that medium. Um, and again, one more time, please like, subscribe, comment down below, click that notification bell. It really helps us get our channel out there to more people like you. And we can't wait for you to tune in next time to the next Watch and Stitch, which you'll know because you subscribed and hit that notification bell. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.